So hello, everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Catalina Briseno. I'm Director of Industry and Market Trends at the Canada Media Fund. And once again, I'm really honored to be here um, at MIPCube to showcase some great uh, multi-platform projects coming out of Canada. So we have quite a program today, so I'm just going to reach my clicker and we're going to start that immediately. So some of you may know by now, uh, Canada is uh, a, a very favorable environment uh, to create multi-platform content. And that is for many reasons. We have plenty of talent uh, on screen and behind the scenes. Uh, we have a very rich uh, cultural diversity of voices. Uh, there is a true political will as well to build a strong cultural uh, industry and um, a dynamic uh, digital economy. And there is a mobilized uh, cable and satellite industry that reinvests uh, each year around $260 million uh, in the creation of Canadian content. This funding actually flows back to the industry through different funding agencies. So around 200 million are uh, flowing back to the industry through the Canada Media Fund, and around 60 million goes through uh, private funds such as the Bell Fund, uh, the Shaw Rocket Fund, Quebecer Fund. And this provides uh, the foundations for very diversified and solid uh, financing ecosystems. So the projects I'm going to show to you, uh, to you today uh, were made possible thanks to a variety of these funding sources. Now, it is true, very, uh, very favorable conditions for sure, yet we in Canada, like in any other television sector around the world, uh, we must deal with the growing challenges facing a content ecosystem that is continuously disrupted by new uh, digital technologies. So if technology is an important driver of this continuous transformation, there is another one, right? Which is fundamental and much more elusive, and that is the audience, right? So first thing, of course, uh, consumption of content behaviors is, uh, are still evolving a lot. So we knew already that the audience wanted to access their content anytime, anywhere on the platform of their choice. But now, uh, and this is uh, two new characteristics that are captured in the sentence uh, from Saul Berman from IBM, and I believe we cannot ignore those anymore. So beyond being on demand and on the run, the, co the consumption of content is also social and distracted. Multitasking while watching television is happening big time. And of course, it's directly influenced by uh, the many uh, devices that are available in the households. And in addition to that, of course, and this is something we all knew as well, internet has empowered crowds everywhere around the world. Um, it, it affects our lives on many levels, uh, but on television, what it means is that the traditional value chain, of course, is not linear anymore. Audience is not waiting patiently at the end of the spectrum for us to deliver the content. Uh, they want to be involved, they want to participate, and they're taking a new role on all levels here, from creation to production, financing, think about crowdfunding, promotion, marketing of the content and the projects they really like. So, as the audience is taking this new role, of course, Content creators and television producers and broadcasters must revisit their own role in order to create those new relationships more dynamic with the audience. Now, in my, in my view, there is no other choice than becoming just better in understanding that audience. There is nothing such as a, a singular and undifferentiated audience anymore. We can segment the audience based on their level of interaction and engagement to a content. And if it is true that a vast majority wants to remain passive, there is a growing proportion that wants to become active users, and there's even those who want to become even more involved and truly participate and interact with the content and with other users as they're watching their favorite shows. So the projects that I'm now going to show you are clever and uh, very inventive uh, responses to this new environment. And they clearly show that the new role of television is nothing but 
directing and orchestrating these multiple layers of complexity and these new relationships. So um, what I'm going to show you now, they, they, they use the, the projects that I'm going to show uh, use um, strategies such as second screen and social TV strategies in order to really engage the audience as users, uh, as well as to dealing successfully with the scattered uh, attention of the multitasking users. And um, they're gonna, they show as well uh, how to uh, build very integrated experiences using technology and how to measure that feedback loop that is created with the television program. So are you ready to watch some cool stuff. So the first uh, project, Emily, could be described as a technologically enhanced romantic tale. Uh, the producer's ambition uh, for this project was quite simple. Use a variety of communication tools, uh, means, and as well as many devices as possible uh, to tell a story differently. I'm going to show you a, a video, and then uh, we're going to talk about the project. Bon, entre vous et moi, là, combien de films vous avez vus? Mille? Deux mille? Trois mille, là, à l'arrière, là? Mais une fiction transmédia, avez-vous déjà vu ça? Non! Eh bien, voici Émilie. Autour d'Émilie, il y a quatre gars. Il y a son chum, Bruno, son ex, Jeff, son premier amour, Patrick, et son faux ami, Mathieu. Mathieu, t'es où? T'as le train! Je t'ai toujours rêvé. Et s'ils si s'aiment pas beaucoup entre eux, c'est parce qu'ils aiment tous Émilie. Alors ça va être la guerre. C'est quatre gars. Et la guerre, elle va commencer sur Internet. Hey, c'est Émilie, ça, hein? Et vous allez y prendre part. Oh! Que oui! Donnez-moi votre courriel. Je vais vous montrer quelque chose de surprenant sur sa blonde qui l'aime. Alors vous allez être pris à partir. Recevoir des courriels, des vidéos, voir des sites cochons. Je veux jouer pour toi lingerie ou vinyle. Passer des coups de fil. Ils vont même vous appeler au téléphone. C'est pas un hasard si les acteurs ont toujours des téléphones intelligents. Enfin, presque toujours. C'est pour vous permettre de les découvrir Patrick. dans des courts-métrages interactifs. Allô? Ah, tiens, justement. Oui, allô, Émilie. Je suis un petit peu occupé, là. Je te rappelle. Sinon, dans Émilie, il y a aussi beaucoup de stars québécoises qui ont joué un peu à Hollywood, comme Emmanuel Bilodeau, Lisa, Isabelle Blake, Martha Emmanuel. Il y a aussi Didier Lucien, Pascal Lucien et Jacques Leroux qui se passent de vêtements. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait, là, lui? N'oublions pas Leonardo DiCaprio. En tout cas, il y a sa photo. Et même Angelina Jolie. Yes, yes, Angelina. Enfin, elle arrive. Ou pas. Non, c'est pas vrai. Les midis, c'est aussi un vrai film avec tous les ingrédients. Des cascades. Du sexe. J'adore. De la bagarre. Du sang. Et là, ce que vous avez dit. Des courses poursuites. De l'exotisme, de l'art, oh non, Donc voilà, Émilie, c'est d'abord des courts-métrages qui commencent sur Internet et dans lesquels vous interagissez avec les personnages. Oh, et c'est aussi un film qui va sortir en salle au cinéma. On se fait, on va se faire. Et alors là, il n'y aura plus d'interaction. Vous vous taisez. Le film est, le film est déjà tourné. Il est, il est très bon, là. Et là, on éteint son téléphone, OK? On est prêt là, là. Excellent. So first thing I want you to know is that Jose Vallée from Attraction Media, the producer of this great project, is in the room. Jose, can you do this? Hello. She will actually be presenting uh, tomorrow morning at Producers Hub. I think it starts at 9.45. She will go and delve more into uh, this project and uh, other things that are uh, done by Attraction Media. Now, the plot behind Emily is driven by a series of online narrative experiences. Uh, there's, first of all, those four uh, main interactive storylines that introduce us to the characters, and the relationship is mainly created to, through the phones. So uh, they can call us. Actually, the characters call you on your cell phone phone, and you can text them back, and as well, the user can access a, a whole voicemail uh, system that plays exclusive audio content. Now, to expand uh, the story as well to superfans, the producers also created two microsites uh, that live in parallel, but yet, of course, are related to the whole story world. Now, from a technological... technological? 
<laughs> standpoint, that's the French in me, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> the, the producers, uh, to deliver this experience, uh, choice a voice over IP platform that it's called uh, UBD. Now, uh, the platform uh, is able to recognize, you know, the, the user's choice uh, in order to uh, be able also to determine what uh, messages will be generated further on as the, the, the users are progressing in their interact interactive stories. And uh, the platform also adds a, a, a quite um, a layer of uh, realism uh, by using also a voice recognition uh, software. But beyond the technological challenges, this project is revisiting uh, uh, many other aspects and traditional aspects of uh, a production. Uh, for instance, in terms of collaboration, and I'm pretty sure Jules is going to talk about that tomorrow uh, as well. Uh, but very interestingly, there was a very interesting work done between the film uh, writer and the interactive directors uh, while writing uh, the, the interactive stories, uh, the actual uh, directors were helping the writer identify which moments in the plot could actually be converted into users' interaction instead of just narrative. And so in many other ways, uh, this project is setting the grounds uh, for new storytelling. Uh, the, the project was launched only in, in, in March, uh, March 1st, and it has al al already gather more than 100,000 uh, visitors uh, for all the components. And interestingly enough, the film is not even launched yet, as it is set to launch at the end of this month. So uh, we're going to go uh, to the other project that is called, uh, in real life, uh, this popular kids uh, TV show broadcasted on YTV in Canada uh, actively engage their audience as users. Now, take a look at how they do that. By playing Race to the Finish on web or mobile, fans of the TV series in real life get to participate in shaping the show's narrative. In the show, 12 to 14 year olds compete doing extreme adult jobs. Fans put their game and level building points towards bringing an on-air challenger back for a daring webisode, while also giving themselves a shot at appearing in it too. Shot and structured with the show's TV crew and characters, and acting as an 11th episode, the webisode competition gives fans a unique sense of involvement in the show, and an exciting reason to play the interactive game. The two TV challengers with the most points, and two top fans in the game, are brought back to face off in the webisode. This year, there were wild reptile handlers wrangling deathly creatures like tarantulas and huge Burmese pythons. Available on iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch, the new mobile app gives fans another way to access the game in addition to Season 2's Flash website, which has become one of YTV's top three most played games of all time. With nearly 4 million views and over 10,000 levels built, it was important to create a seamless transition from web to mobile for Season 3, while also driving fans back to the show. When players use the new app, their teammates' points and badges from the online game all automatically appear. Built using Unity 3D and iOS, the app is just as fast as the web experience and doesn't require Wi-Fi to play. It's also one of the first games in the iTunes App Store to offer a user-friendly and highly functional community level builder. Players can easily swipe through, browsing backgrounds, songs and game objects, and effortlessly drag in objects to customize their own levels for other fans to play. This extraordinary feature allows the game to scale and is a huge factor in the longevity and success of the project. With twice the background, songs, and objects, Season 3's game is just as popular as last year's game. It was awarded an FWA Mobile of the Day and maintained its spot as one of YTV.com's number one games. Since launching in 2010, Race to the Finish has been an unprecedented audience success with more than 6.5 million web views and mobile sessions and an average of nearly three mobile sessions a day per user. So, as you could see, uh, by playing online iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, viewers uh, virtually voted to control the narrative of the final webisodes. Kids were actually putting their game uh, points towards bringing back their favorite challengers while also playing uh, for a chance to participate themselves. Now, what's interesting about this uh, thing uh, is that the conceptual uh, driving forces behind the actual mobile and online game was actually created based on feedback from 
the audience, the television show audience. In previous uh, seasons, the producers, the TV show producers, got tons of fans' emails uh, from kids saying they wanted to bring back certain challengers that got eliminated to give them a second shot. So uh, the whole, uh, this season was completely built, uh, and the, the, the builder, uh, the level builder uh, online game was built based on that feedback. Engaging the audience as participant on the final webisode also paid a lot. The webisode went on air, uh, not on air, actually, online. <laughs> it went online just one hour after uh, the TV show finale, and it became so popular that actually YTV decided to put it on air and to broadcast it on television. Now, as of today, Respawn has been amazing. Uh, the website has accumulated, as you saw, 6.6 uh, .6 million views. Players build 250 levels in the game on launch day alone, uh, which obviously superseded uh, the broadcaster's expectation that was actually expecting 200 levels throughout the season. So uh, as of today, uh, the, the, the level builder has now uh, 10,000 unique fan-generated levels. So, yet, you know, the success for this kind of project wasn't, sure, uh, wasn't a sure thing. The webisode and the TV show were created by two separate teams, a uh, secret location for the webisode and apartment 11 uh, for the TV show, and obviously they needed to work hand-in-hand, hand. once again, you know, uh, having the writers uh, playing on both fields in order to be sure that the quality and the tone of the webisode would uh, follow that one of the television. And in this case, because it's a kids' show, obviously, uh, the, the broadcasters was, was highly involved as well, uh, especially with the legal teams, to be sure that um, they were able to take all the parental permissions, they were able to find all the parental uh, permissions, because obviously online, the fans become very enthusiastic, but since you're dealing uh, with uh, kids, you know, they, they had to be sure of that. So, but for now, the results talk for themselves, and beyond those awards that were uh, named there, uh, this show has been nominated for several more and has won as well uh, the Digi Award, uh, Best in Cross-Platform Kids, as well as the gold medal for 2012 mobile application in W3 Awards. So now let's move to the next project. The Defector, <coughs> excuse me, is a highly dramatic, suspenseful documentary about two escaping North Koreans who rely on a human smuggler to help them defect from North Korea. Take a look at the demo. どうしてたんかけどこっちを。あ、じまないでこう。まなざまざ、どこ내가 진짜 완벽한 첩보 전이라든가 스파이 처럼 행동을 해야 사고가 안 나요. Which is gripping. Two faces of North Korea. The one Kim Jong Il showed the world, and the one me and my family see every day. No one from outside sees how much we struggle.
when famine hit our country, nearly a hundred thousand have escaped. Today, someone will succeed. So the Defectors of Project built with three distinct uh, experience spaces. So as you saw, uh, the film depicts the story of individuals that are escaping from North Korea. And actually, this reality reflects uh, the reality of ten of thousands of North Koreans currently in hiding in China. So this uh, documentary was filmed undercover by a Korean-Canadian filmmaker, An Shin, to get an intimate access to what these people are living, and it delivers a dramatic point of view film. Now, the interactive web uh, doc was created to propose an experience uh, on a point of view uh, uh, experience to the users in order to them for, to immerse in something in an experience that is completely out of the realm. Uh, it was meant also to provide further information uh, about what's the life in North Korea and how it works is actually the Defector Interactive uh, combines the story of six real defectors into one journey. It's an immersive uh, experience that begins inside North Korea and that allows the user to take the journey out of the country into China and Southeast Asia. Now, creating this whole environment was very challenging uh, for the, the film crew and uh, for the producers because, uh, because everything was filmed undercover, there weren't enough uh, visual assets. So actually, what they did, the director, they hired a, a company based out of New York, an award-winning company, uh, to recreate a whole environment uh, of uh, uh, motion graphics and uh, highly end animation in order to recreate this immersive environment. Now, what isn't shown in uh, the demo is also the social media layer of all of this through a Facebook app that provides uh, a, a space for action and exchange. So, of course, it is linked to the whole um, system and enables the community of users and viewers to view uh, more defector footage and stories in the Facebook environment. It provides additional resources and ways to support the cause through different NGOs and also uh, to upload uh, your own uh, stories and uh, photos and videos about uh, what people are living uh, through escaping different countries where they believe uh, their human rights are betrayed. So, in short, the defector proposed three experiences that are based... Uh, the film is about seeing and understanding, whereas the web doc is about about feeling and engaging, and the Facebook space is about taking action and sharing. So now we're going to move uh, to this next project that I'm pretty sure you've uh, probably heard about it since it's based on the international smash hit The Voice. The Quebec version of this Andemol format is called La Voix, and the transmedia objective could be described as follow: Build fan commitment by enabling them to leave and breathe la voix 24-7. La Voix, today's hottest global TV phenomenon, originated by Talpa, has been on the air in Quebec since January 20th, 2013. This Quebec version, produced by Production G and broadcast by Groupe TVA, draws over 2.5 million viewers every week, reaching a peak of 63% market share. In addition, La Voix is also the most advanced interactive experience available for any program on Quebec TV. Accessing this interactive experience, the viewer can watch the program while following social networks thanks to the Smart TV application, make live predictions on the eventual winners with the fifth coach application available on mobile devices, exchange and follow up on latest news via social media, enhance the experience by watching live webcasts preceding the program, during commercial breaks and after the show. Qu'est-ce qu'on te dit ce soir sur Twitter? Ben surtout 400 de vos abonnés. Wow. Whoa! Between programs, fans can continue experiencing La Voix with additional ways to play Fifth Coach. Exclusive video and written interviews uploaded during the week on the official La Voix website. Excerpts of participants' auditions available on the Illico TV site. Fans are encouraged to join the action at any time by interacting on official social networks. The show has also created Facebook and Twitter accounts for all participants on La Voix. The interactive La Voix experience is widely promoted on TV, contributing to its success on digital platforms. After nine weeks on the air, the program's interactive component has broken all records for Quebec TV, with a community of 125,000 Facebook fans, 
75,000 downloads of the Fifth Coach application and an average of over 700,000 weekly page views on the official website. Facebook pages devoted to our participants have amassed a combined community of 118,000 fans and their Twitter accounts have attracted 60,000 viewers. The behind the scenes webcast drew 50,000 hits during the first broadcast of the program. So now you can experience La Voix 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So to deliver this uh, round the clock experience, um, all through the TV season, Quebec producers and TV broadcasters worked in building um, an expanded universe, as you could see, of activities. Um, the main components, as it was mentioned, was the fifth uh, coach application, as well as the connected TV component. Now, uh, the fifth, I'm just going to delve a little uh, further into that application that um, is available on La Voix official website, and that actually enables the users to play in different game modes throughout the week broadcast. So you can play uh, either in an asynchronous, is, is this correct, asynchronous? I, I like that word. Okay, so the, during the pre-show, right? Or while you're watching the show in a synchronous uh, way in real time. So. Uh, the users have to predict whether one of the coaches will turn around in approval for one of the contestants before the final verdict uh, is in. Now, in real-time mode, what it also uh, gives an opportunity for the audience to do is actually to enter and share uh, their opinion on each contestant's performance. And the closer the comments are to those of other players, the more they they earn points. Now, what this provides uh, uh, as a possibility and uh, also with the whole connected TV component that is continuously providing uh, more conversation and another layer of information coming out of social networks. Just by the way, the connected TV application, what it allows is extras, uh, like extra viewing experience. So you can either see the live tweets as you're watching the show on your TV set, uh, or also see keywords that are the most often used in the tweets while talking about the contestant and coach. So the idea is that these engagement strategies not only help managing the scattered attention of the multitasking audience uh, during the broadcast, but it actually provided the producers with plenty of valuable information. And this is what I believe is very interesting about this project. Actually, the user data was uh, thoroughly used by the producers uh, to identify public preferences. So it was used to shape all of the show's interactive components as well as the actual broadcast. Production teams were able to anticipate what will happen in future broadcasts based on viewers' opinion and social media conversation. And the data also help uh, uh, use put the, the web team to help them promote the features and posters, uh, postings users enjoyed the most. And this actually is what contributed in doing this very well executed and integrated, uh, provided the fact that it had so many activities and components, digital media components related uh, with this uh, television show centric approach, uh, the, the challenge was really the coordination in, in, in order to deliver a well-executed and very synchronized um, experience. Now, as you saw, it's a huge success in Quebec. Uh, it has actually grabbed, uh, at this point, 63% of audience share uh, in the nights of broadcast. So let's move to the fifth and final uh, project, but not the least. Uh, Over the Rainbow uh, is a talent show that cast the role of Dorothy in the stage production of The Wizard of Oz. It's also a breakthrough in interactive television. The idea uh, was to get the audience involved and engage as much as possible. And uh, let's see how they achieve that. Thank you. Your votes determine who gets to wear the ruby slippers. Over the Rainbow is a show in which 10 girls are competing to be cast as Dorothy in the stage production of The Wizard of Oz. But it's a little different to your average song and dance show. Here, the audience has a real say. In a little bit of magic created by the munchkins here at CBC, the audience can watch and rate a performance live as it's happening. 
I've done a lot of shows like this, but none that have really had the sort of audience participation, the interactivity of this show. Go to our website to learn how to vote, play along live, and after each performance, tell us if you liked it or loved it with the help of our virtual applause meter, AKA the crystal ball. In some ways, the crystal ball is almost as important as the judges, because the, the viewing audience gets, gets a chance to hear what the judges think, but also seeing what your fellow viewers think about each performance live really has a major impact. Some of the interactive elements, like the ability to watch a performance on TV, rate that performance in real time on your second screen, and then have that audience rating appear back on TV live. Some of this stuff was groundbreaking. I don't think it had ever been done before, but it was also for us, it served a purpose. It was something larger. It was an introduction to an interactive world around the show. And it all revolved around the format choosing the winning Dorothy by voting and earning those votes. To cast a vote on this show, you gotta earn it first. How? By answering quiz questions and participating in challenges on the website and the app. And it's really about making TV more fun. We love like during a week, like even we'll have like a homework break and we'll just start doing all the different um, activities online and, and the daily challenges. Challenges. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. and racking up votes. We have like a competition in the house just who can get the most votes in one <laughs> yeah. day. More interactive. Are you really going to get me to say how often I go on there? Yeah. My husband's yeah. going to kick me out of the house. And more engaging for the fans at home. <laughs> for your sh TV shows that you like to watch, would you like to be able to kind of interact with them? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most interactive show I've ever done. And it's also probably the most successful. It definitely's paid off. It definitely's paid off. And I wish now, seeing how it's worked on the show, that when we started the project, we could have found more ways to get the audience involved and had even more interactivity. But that's for the next show. Voting starts now. So what are you waiting for? Go to cbc.ca slash over the rainbow and make your voice heard. Hmm. This project, um, oh no, I'm going to talk to you about it first. I was already in my final, uh, final slides. But as you saw, you know, um, it, it has many uh, innovative features uh, in terms of audience engagement, but I just wanted to uh, return back on two of them that appears to me uh, like being really uh, interesting. At least uh, it was never uh, done before in Canada. So first of all, uh, the fact that uh, you needed to earn the voting, of course, um, as many other talent shows, uh, over the rainbow, engage the fan base in giving the opportunity to the audience, of course, to save the challengers they prefer, their favorite, uh, avoid the elimination, but also to vote uh, for the final winner. And this is something specific to this show as well, is the actual final winner. It's always with the jury's vote, as the show uh, is aired during the season, but the actual final winner of uh, Dorothy will be chosen uniquely and only exclusively <laughs> by the, the, the members of the community. So the audience is the one who gets to choose the final uh, Dorothy that's gonna win. And then um, it's, it's very interesting that actually uh, you have to earn your vote. So as much as you participate and it has created lots of activities, you know, user generated content, of course, the quiz, the polls that were sent through Twitter and all of these activities actually contributed uh, for the audience to earn more uh, uh, points and vote. Now the crystal ball, as you could see, I don't know if you noticed that, but the crystal ball is actually on set. So maybe some of you uh, wonder how that is uh, working. So it's use a multi-platform synchronized second screen app. Uh, the audience can play uh, uh, during the show, and among the activities, then can, they can rate the performances using this magic crystal ball. So it does use audio syncing uh, technology. The ball would appear uh, in your app at the last very few seconds of a performance, and then uh, once the audience has submitted the ratings, the crystal ball would then appear on television, color-coded according to the audience feedback in real time. For the first time ever, the audience participated in the show, and then viewers would see the results of that participation appear back on TV 
live in every time zone via the, mag uh, via the, ma the magic uh, crystal ball. So through that continuous feedback that was given by the audience uh, through the crystal ball or the performance ratings, um, the members, uh, the, 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 the producers were able uh, to start very accurately to predict uh, which, uh, which candidate, which challenger uh, would be eliminated. They also uh, be able to uh, accurately predict who would get the most votes every night. So the biggest impact uh, from the social media monitoring was that the producer changed the performance length and the music selection from one episode to the next, according to the audience feedback. And uh, the social media monitoring also uh, was done directly in the control room of the CBC, so you actually had the interactive teams that were we're working with the TV runners and the TV show uh, producers in the control room, coordinating uh, several talents and uh, several um, teams at the same time. So it was an outstanding success in terms of traffic and fan engagement. Uh, it won one of the most successful shows uh, of CBC uh, has ever done. Uh, there's more than 5 million page views. Uh, the peak vote per minute was 42,112 which is uh, the, the system was able to, of course, deal with all of that. So it was a very neat uh, technological integration. Now, uh, the producers shared with us some interesting uh, data, a lot of data, actually. But I just want to show you two slides, which I believe are very interesting. Uh, this actually shows uh, where the users were. So you had like, the Twitter users, the app uniques, and the web uniques. And what I thought was interesting is, you know, despite the popularity of uh, Twitter and social media that everybody talks about, the reality is is that most of uh, the audience uh, that was using the second screen app was actually on the web. So uh, this is uh, quite interesting because, of course, uh, it devised a whole strategy in terms of how do you reach your audience and where do you talk to them. And although we talk a lot about social TV and so on, well, the reality is that most of people still uh, reach to their laptop uh, or, or through the web, uh, through tablets, to actually connect and interact with their show. Now, this other uh, slide shows what the users were involved in, in terms of activities. So you could see that most of it, of course, were the whole editorial uh, component. But what I think is very interesting here is 23% of time, uh, of the user time was actually spent on instructional, which actually highlights the importance for uh, a, pr a, a producer or creator to clearly indicate what you're expecting the audience to do as a user. This is super important and to provide, you know, all the information for them to clearly understand that. So we are in a learning curve right now uh, as these new relationships and new engaging strategies are emerging through social TV and, and second screen. Well, we need to help and support the audience uh, learning that uh, how, what is expected from them as users as well. So 23% of the users actually accessed and spent time on the instruction instru which is the how-to. How can I play to this? How can I engage? So I know it's a very humble and very rapid overview uh, of some great projects. I, I still hope that uh, you took some things out of it. First of all, I think, in my view, that it's very hard now to call these uh, TV programs. Uh, there are sophisticated uh, systems that are open-ended and uh, um, evolving. Uh, they're iterative, you know, as we create this feedback loop uh, with the audience. Uh, there, there also, as you could see in the different graphics, uh, there is no uh, a, a one-fits-all approach uh, to audience engagement. So there's no format to that. Uh, there's no one single model. Uh, each has to build that uh, according uh, to creating some meaning, according to your project objectives and concepts. And in general, I would say that uh, the most important thing at this point is to understand that television creators, producers, and broadcasters are in a unique opportunity to reinvent uh, that relationship and take the opportunity to actually uh, engage uh, further, you know, the different levels of audiences, whether they're casual users, the, the, the mass audience that wants to remain passive, or the power uh, super fan users. So, Go ahead, 
stimulate, uh, stimulate them by offering, you know, uh, engaging experiences and very well integrated user experiences. Activate all of those devices and technology that are available for you. Go ahead, be imagine it, uh, it, let your imagination go. And uh, more importantly than anything, measure, measure and measure that feedback loop, loop in order to build and iterate on your project and uh, be able to amplify that relationship with the audience. And now, the sandwiches are ready. So, <laughs> they're right outside. While I was talking to you, I was careful to see if, you know, they were preparing the lunch, and it's ready. I'm just going to leave that final slide here. That is Canada on screen. If you're interested in discovering more projects that are supported by the Canada Media Fund, I welcome you to go and visit. There's some uh, great stuff out there as well. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much for being here. I know Tim Kring is speaking in another room, so thank you for being there.